Well, silver and gold are real money. They are God's money. An ounce of silver or an ounce of gold, all that is, is proof positive that labor, capital, and equipment have already been used to create that bar or coin or what have you. Whereas dollars are just a promise of future dollars. One data point that absolutely shows, and, and what, what we've been talking about for a long time is that there's too much debt in the system. If you look at Japan, as of last week, the Bank of Japan now owns more than 50% of all Japanese government debt. And that right there is the outright definition of monetization. The problem now is it's, it's, it will bring into uh, focus the value of the yen. Uh, I mean, the, the, final, the final ending to this is they lose their currency. You could get a, a mortgage back then. They call them liar loans. You didn't have to, you really didn't have to prove income. You didn't have to prove anything. I mean, you could have been a, a dog that was breathing and you could get a loan back then. So it's a little bit different now. Uh, but the, the, the big difference now is interest rates had gotten down to, I think uh, late last year, you could get a 30 year mortgage at two and three quarters, two and seven eighths percent. We're now at 6%. So what that basically does, and of course we're in a huge bubble. I mean, we've seen over the last two years, we've seen huge increases in prices. So you, you match up the huge increases along with the increase in the interest rates, and for instance, at the beginning of the year, if you've qualified for a million dollar mortgage, you know you don't even qualify for a six hundred thousand dollar mortgage now. So what that does, or has effectively done, is it's shrunk the buyer pool. In other words, the amount of qualified buyers out there is much less than it was just six months ago. So what I think you're going to see is, uh, and you are, certainly are already seeing. There is no ability to refinance because we're coming off the lowest rates of all time. And we're actually at higher rates now than we were three, four years ago. So it's it's really important to, to understand how interest rates and the rise in interest rates, because that sector is so leveraged, is going to affect the real estate pricing negatively. The core to that scenario is a credit freeze, is a credit crisis. Uh, if the U.S. Treasury was unable to, to borrow, if, if no foreigners bought any treasuries, uh, and I've said this many, many times, the entire system relies on credit to function. And I've used this analogy of a loaf of bread. There's 10, 12, or even more uses of credit between the wheat in the field and the loaf of bread in the store. And if any one of those uses of credit ceases to exist, the loaf of bread doesn't get created or does not make it to the shelves. So as far as the Mad Max scenario, if credit goes down, our way of life in the West, in the United States, our way of life is is shut off. It's you're on your own. Think about this. I mean, just something as simple as if you live in a small town or whatever, or, or I mean, anywhere in a city, the, 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 the police themselves that, you know, draw a paycheck every week, um, when credit goes down, how are they going to get paid? Are they really going to go to work if they're not getting paid? Or are they going to go home and protect their own family? I, I mean, I... I think it's a no-brainer. They're going to go home, protect their own family. Everybody's going to tr try to protect themselves. And that's one of the messages I've tried to spread over the years is become as self-sufficient as you possibly can. Try not to rely on, uh, you know, rely on other sources for things. You, you need to become your own central bank. You need to think about your own protection. You need to think about your own uh, production or procurement of food. When when credit goes down, everything shuts down. Absolutely everything. 
Well, silver and gold are real money. They are God's money. Uh, an ounce of silver or an ounce of gold, all that is is proof positive that labor, capital, and equipment have already been used to create that bar or coin or what have you. Whereas dollars are just a promise of future dollars. For instance, if you, you own a treasury or whatever, it's just a, a, a promise of, of getting future dollars, but you're getting future nothings. Uh, gold and silver being real money, when credit collapses, that will take the currency with it. Everything, all paper assets are going to be destroyed in value. And what's left standing? Gold and silver will be the two men left standing because they are real they're universally accepted all over the world. They've had value for 5,000 years. And man's uh, brilliant stupidity at this point to where we are now is not going to change 5,000 years of history and all of a sudden gold and silver are not worth anything. And it also goes back to something for something. Think about in a broken down situation, you're a farmer, uh, you have pigs, you have uh, chickens, you produce eggs. Are you really going to take a piece of paper with ink on it for your eggs or do you want something real? I mean, I can tell you, I've talked to farmers here locally ahead of time and asked, you know, if things get really bad, will you accept silver? And many times they tell me, I'd rather accept silver now. Uh, with gold, I think there's a very good chance of that, but I don't think it will be a door-to-door -door confiscation. And I say that because if that were to happen, you would have... Uh, so many shootouts, so many deaths, the way, the likely way that, that any government would, would try to capture gold would be make it Ill, like they did in the 1930s, make it illegal to own and, or, uh, put a huge tax on the sale of it. And, and, and something like that would create much higher values because anytime you have a black market, prices go through the roof or values, the value goes through the roof because it's coveted. Yeah, well, people ask me all the time, how much money should I put into gold? How much should I put into silver uh, or gold and silver collectively? And my my standard answer now is whatever you don't want to lose. So yeah, absolutely. If, if you're in a, in a pension plan, um, you're in paper assets. You're not in, you're not in, in uh, something that's real and cannot default. And that's the key with gold and silver. The world, the world right now is insolvent, and where we're headed forward from here is a global bankruptcy. But gold and silver cannot bankrupt because they have no liability. As I mentioned, all they are is proof that labor, capital, and equipment have already been used to create them. So it, it, the, uh, gold and silver, you can't wake up tomorrow morning and find out, oh, my gold ounce, it bankrupted last night. I would have told you, you know, it's it's basically uh, it's been done with with paper contracts on COMEX, on LBMA, on LME. Uh, Pam and Russ Martins put an article out. You might want to dig that up and post that with this interview. They put an article out last night that uh, J.P. Morgan and uh, Citicor now control or are now counterparties to ninety percent of. Uh, the, the precious metals derivatives outstanding and their precious metals derivatives have exploded fivefold, tenfold since the beginning of the year. So there's your answer. That's how it's been done. <laughs>